Welcome to our fourth tutorial on our new GUI Hangman feature in SQL. Um, last lesson we went about and made our computer or made a login screen for our Hangman game. We stored that information in the database. Well, we didn't store it, we checked the information in the database. Um, and we would have found during that that we had two users. We had Jeff and Damo, which is all fine if you're Jeff or Damo, but if you're anyone else other than Jeff or Damo, you can't play a Hangman game. So what we need to be able to get into that is that we need to actually register new users. So let's look at how that works in this case. So again, we've got our screens, we've got a login screen, we've got a controller, and we've got our model. And that's how the actual game starts up in that state. Um, so the first thing that happens is that we get a, reg a click of the registration button. We need to get that. The controller gets it from the, um, from the UI. Um, it then changes the UI across to the register screen. Um, we get the register page, register button click. When we get that, so the user's typed in the new username and the new password and their password. It, the controller gets the information, gets the username and gets the password. Once it gets that click, and then it gets all the usernames from the data store because you need to make sure that this username that the people are putting in isn't already taken, right? So it checks and see if the username is taken. And if the username is taken, it sends a message back to our UI. Um, if the message, if the username is not taken, it will then needs to add to the username and password to the data store so it's actually in there. And then once it's done that, it'll send the username um, and it'll get the user ID. So we actually get the user ID as well. Um, so we've got that stored into our main computer, um, our, our main memory of the, of the program. So that's the kind of process. You can see we've got three kind of interactions here because like always we're going to start by working on the data store module. We're going to put those data in. We're going to test it to make sure that it's working. So the, and then we can then do the controller and the UI components of it. So the three that we have, we've got the get user ID. We have got the adding the username and credential or adding the credentials to the data store. And finally, we've got getting a list of all usernames. Now we already have the get user ID. We've made that in the last video. Um, so we really just need to focus on our get all usernames and our add credentials methods. So let's start looking at that in code. So once again, I'm in my data store here and we're gonna start with the get all usernames. So I'm still in my get section. You'll see get results, so sorry, um, get methods here. So I'm still in the get section. I'm gonna come down and I'm going to make sure I have two gaps after, two spaces after, or lines, after the last method. And I'm gonna define my new method, which is get all usernames. Okay, I'm gonna open that. I'm gonna define it with self. Okay, so this because it's get all usernames from this data store. And of course, um, I don't need anything else, and I'm not gonna pass any arguments in because I'm just finding everything from the database. So, but I am returning a value, so remember our type hints. I'm gonna say, yep, here is it's going to return. And what it's gonna return is a list of strings. Okay, that's how we say a list of strings in our land of data types. So it tells us that it's gonna return a list of strings. Um, and let me say our doc string explaining what the document actually is. It returns a uh, list of all um, current usernames. Yep, I think that works. So we've done that. We've got the our doc string explaining it. Now remember, this is an SQL query again, okay? so always with the SQL queries, we do two parts with it. And the first part is we're going to execute that query. So I use a cursor to execute. So let's call the cursor up, and I'm gonna use the execute method on it. Open the brackets, I put an enter in, and then I open the multi-line string with um, three inverted commas, so I can actually write my SQL query. And my SQL query is quite simple. It just says select um, name from users. Okay, I'm gonna come over and check my data store again. So I come over here, Oop, no, that one, data store. I'm gonna open the database. I'm gonna have a look in here and users and name. And that's what I've got the right, capital U for users and N for name. Okay, awesome. So I've done that. Now, I'm not passing any parameters and I haven't got any where, so I haven't got any values that need to get passed in, so we just leave it at that. So the second part of a query, of an SQL query in, in um, Python, is that we need to actually then get the results. 
So remember we have been putting results into, um, into the results um, variable. And again, we use our cursor because, um, yeah, oh, self, right? self dot cursor. Um, we use our cursor to actually get the um, get the results, and the command that we use is fetch. Now I'm going to return a list of all the usernames, so I want to get all the ones that are there. So I'm going to use the fetch all option. So remember, this is the cursor, which is what we use to access and and work with the database. And we take all information, we're putting it into results, and as we have done previously, we're going to return those results. So I can actually run it in Pi, I mean, sorry, in test, and see what it actually produces. So let's look at test. And I'm now gonna change this across to um, db.get uh, all usernames, put that in. And look in here, it's gonna tell me again that, yep, I return a string, it popped up there. All right, so let's run that and have a look. And it's producing, well, it's giving me a list, but it's giving me a list of tuples. Okay, this is pretty similar to the kind of stuff we dealt with when talking about a list of words. No, but we weren't returning the words. Okay, so okay, left list of tuples is what it's returning. So we don't want that. We, we only want to say Jeff and we want to say Dymo in, in a list. So let's come back and how can we change our results. Okay, so we need to pre process the list, list of tuples which is currently in the results variable. So I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna say um, for value in re, um, results, yep. For the values in the results, so I've got each, long, each value of the, of the results, I'm um, sorry, and I'm gonna put user and empty list up here. It's a little bit over the place. Equals Right, so let's go back. I've got a user here, I'm making an empty list, and then I'm gonna go through our list of tuples, and I'm gonna say for each one, so each value in that list, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna to append to our new list just the first element of each tuple. So I say, um, users dot append, open this bracket up, and then I say, value zero. Okay, so if you say, look down here, this is our list, and we'll do the value, we'll go, you'll go to the results, which is this list here, you'll go to the first one, which is this tuple just here, and say, okay, I want you to take the very first value, which is Jeff, the very first element in that tuple, and I want you to append it to the end of this empty list, empty list here, users. So in the end, it should then, if I return users, you should only have a list of strings as opposed to a list of a tuple. So I'm gonna return users, and let's save that, and go back to my test environment, and I run play, and there we are. I've got a list of strings. So there's first string in, in element zero, and then element one is a second string. Okay, so yes, that's good. I'm getting the correct data, I'm getting the information back, a list of the usernames, and they're a list of strings. And the second one I need to do is I need to do the add credentials. So that's adding the username and the password into the database. So coming back over to our data store, and I'm going down, this is our first add method. Awesome. Make sure there's only two, oh no, two lines there. Come to the end. Right, our add methods, I'm gonna go define, and I'm call this one add, and just the same as all our get methods started with get, we're gonna st um, start all our add methods with add. So add credentials, Ronio, and then um, I need to add self, because we're adding it to this data store, and I'm gonna have the username, and I'm going to have the username, remember our type hint, is gonna be a string, they're passing a string in, and I'm gonna have password and it as well is a string, and I don't return anything, so I just finish off my um, my definition of the method there. Put my doc string in here, and the doc string is just gonna say, 
insert um, username and password into database. Awesome. Okay, so that's done. So I've done that. Now, this is a, not an SQL query. This is an add SQL insert command. So some things are a little bit different, but it still has two stages. And the first stage is still that we need to execute the SQL command. So execute some self.cursor.execute. Open my brackets, put in my multi-line, my three inverted commas for multi-line string. And I'm gonna say, insert the SQL command, insert into users. And I want to insert into name and password. So that's the two here. So name and password. I don't have to worry about saying user ID because user ID is set up as a um, auto increment. So it will automatically add just the next number that's available. So don't have to worry about that. I come down here and I say values. And what values do I want to insert? Now, again, we have to use parameter to parameterized um, SQL statements. So I want to put in, look for the dictionary and put name and then password. Okay, now because I put those little columns in, it's gonna start looking for a, after this um, string, it's gonna start after this command, it's gonna look for a dictionary to use. So I'm gonna put a dictionary in here. And the first item in the dictionary is gonna be name as I had up here, this here says name and colon, and I want it to use username. Okay, so I'm pointing, again, I'm pointing from here to there, from here to here, which is what gets passed in. Right, username, comma. And the other one is password, um, password. Just important with a, um, just like a, a list down here is a comma between elements, um, the a dictionary has a comma between paired elements. This is the first time we've actually had two kind of paired elements in our dictionary. So remember, it goes insert into username into these fields, name and password, the values, name. It says, okay, wait, there's a dictionary. Okay, so I pass in the value that is, I look for the dictionary, look for name, I find username and it tells me to look up here. So whatever value is passed in here, take that as an actual string, literal string, and put the value into name. And does the same with password. Right, so that's the first step. Remember I said that inserts also have two steps. Now, unlike a um, unlike our um, SQL, which is where we actually have to get the fetch or get the information from the cursor, this one we're actually gonna commit the information to the database. So if going back to our word analogy, you know how we open up Word and we type into it and then we'd have the um, we have the cursor that we're typing at. So commit is like saving. It sends the information to the actual drive. And we don't commit with the cursor, because you don't type with, you're not, it's not like you're typing. You don't commit with the surf, um, with the cursor. We commit with the actual connection. So remember that connection is called self.connection. And we simply commit it to the database. Right here, so it's now been committed to the database. Cool, so I've got that value. So let's go, I'm gonna save that, and I'm going to get a test, and I'm going to try this. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm gonna say add credentials. What's when we put in? Oh, look, let's put in a string for a username. So I'm finally gonna let Mich uh, finally let, uh, Michael into using this database, and Michael is chipper. Okay, as his password. Rightio, so I'm going to run that. Let's see what happens. And that's right, nothing happens. It returns none, that makes sense, so I'm printing none. But let's go look at the data store. I come over here, I look at my data store and say users, and there's Michael, and Michael's in there. So it's worked. Rightio, so I know that. Or I could actually just run the show all users, and I would see as well that Michael has been saved into it. So, okay, we now got our two connections, or well, three connections, we already did get user ID. So we've got all three connections that we need from the controller to the data store. So now we need to come into here, um, come into our hangman and set up all the interactions. 
So let's go through these again, going back to the beginning. Get the, regi uh, get the register button click from the login screen. So I've got to come into here, and that means I need to create a, um, a signal from the register button. Now remember there's two register buttons, a register button on the login screen and a register button on the registration screen. So let's make sure we get the right one. So self dot on the UI, in the login screen, um, the register button, when it is clicked, I want to connect and I'm going to say self and basically I'm just going to get it to um, show, show red, um, register. Okay, so I'm just going to make a new little method down here called show or register registration there. Show registration. Okay, so I come down to here and after my slots, I've got new buttons, logins. I'm trying to put it where it belongs. I had another show somewhere, didn't I? New word. No, I didn't. Okay, so after our login, which is the last one we did, coming down, make sure I'm only one indent in, and I need to make new method, def, and it was show um, registration, open, self, and close. And what a self registration does, it um, just basically changes UI to um, display um, registration ah, screen. Okay, so let's see what we have to do with that. It's quite simple. We go self dot UI dot stat widget dot set um, current widget and we want to set it to um, to the self dot UI dot um, oh sorry they shouldn't have a dot in there get rid of that that's why it's unhappy self dot UI dot Registration. See, I, I didn't get my pop-up here, so I knew that something was wrong with my actual code. That's just a little nice little habit to get into. Registration page, and that's going to be displayed. Okay, so let's just save that and actually just run that now and see if it does uh, show because I misspelled registration. Let's just copy that and go up here to my signal and try putting that in. That's better. Um, save it and run it. Okay, so I've got the login screen, which is cool. And now if I click on register, it takes me to the register register screen. So that does what I want it to do. That's fantastic. Now I'm in the register screen. Actually, let's have a look at that again. Now I'm in the register register screen. I want to put those values in, and then when I click this button, which is the register screen on the red, the register button on the register screen. When I click that in, that's when all the magic happens and it takes all the actions. So I need to, again, change another signal. I'm up at my signals, which is great. So again, self dot um, UI dot, uh, it's in the register, right? the registration screen. I want the registration button. There it is. When it is clicked, I want to connect to um, self dot, and I'm going to call this one register user, which again is a method that we haven't made. Made the signal. I'm going to come down to here and into my into my slots. So you see my slots section. Come down to here and say right again one two lines underneath it. Define and it was register user. Right, self because I'm still doing it in this particular game. So this particular method. And what does it do? Put our doc string in, it adds the user to the database if name is available. Oh, 
That's better. Right, so let's go. Um, so first off, was the first step we need to do? Let's go back and look at our data flow a bit. So once the registration button's clicked, we then change the UI, we've done that. Then when they get the registration button clicked, so we've got that signal, we need to get the username, we need to get the password. Awesome. So let's have a look at that. So I am coming in here and I'm saying I need to get the username. So let's put that into a variable here, just a local variable because we're only going to use it for this particular method. And what I want to get is whatever's in self dot registration screen under underscore username and member LE, which stands for line edit. So for what's in the UI, the registration screen username um, line edit. I want to get the text that is there and then put that into username. And I want to do the same for password. So I say password equals self dot UI dot register um, password line edit dot text and close the bracket. So I've got the two values in here. Now, what I need to do is I need to check whether the username is already taken. So remember we made the method to get a list of all the usernames. So we're gonna come down here, we're gonna put an if statement in. I'm gonna say if the username, if username is, and we need to say in, because remember we're turning a list. So we're saying is this username, is it in this list that we got from the database? So say in, and then we need to get the actual list from the database, self dot database dot get, and I'm getting all usernames, makes sense. I'm gonna check it. So if the username is in this list, right out, then I simply have to say self dot UI dot, and on the registration screen, I've got a message label as well, the same as a login screen. And we're gonna say set the text to um, username uh, taken. Okay, so if the username is already done, we're gonna put that message there and just leave it. And they can work out what they wanna do. They have to put another username and change it. Rightio. But if it's not taken, I need to add the credentials to the database. I then need to retrieve and store the user ID. Um, and then um, store that in the in the self dot user ID, and then change UI display to the actual game screen. So that's in my else component here. So in else, onto the first thing, which we've already got the actual database um, method set up for the data store method. So database um, add credentials. Oh, what was that? Try it again. Add credentials, and what I need to add am I Little type hints tell me to add the username and the password, and it's going to return none. So the username is up here. Already got that, and password has been stored in password. Awesome. So I've done both of those. Password is stored in password. And then after none of that, I've got to retrieve, then store the user ID into self.userid so we can use it later on in the program. So I say self. Dot, um, user ID equals self dot from the database. I want you to get um, our um, user ID. So you see when you actually start using the the correct um, naming convention, it kind of makes it flow, the programming you're supposed to do. So from the DB, from the database, you need to get the user ID. It just intuitively helps you along what you need to do. So I'm getting the user database and what am I actually sending? I need to send in the user and the string and our user is username up here. So user name and it's a string and that's gonna return the value of an integer and put it into here. Fantastic. Okay, and then the last thing I need to do is I need to then change the screen self.ui change it the stacked widget concept and then change it across to set current widget to um, the self.ui.game page. 
done. Right, so hopefully that's worked. Let's have a look. Let's play in here. Don't want to log in, I need to register. So first I'm going to check if I put like put demo in because we know that actually exists and what it should do, it should put a warning up here. Um, even though I put the right stuff in, it should put a warning up here and go register. Username is taken and nothing happens. Right, yeah, so let's let's try to make this a bit more gender um, balanced. And I can put in um, uh, it help if I could spell. Amy? Oh, let's just make it Emma. Um, Rodeo, Emma and Smiley. Is that? And I go register. Name's registered. I'm into the hangman screen. I'm going to jump over to here and let's have a look at our users. And I'm just hitting that. And there's Emma and Smiley's in there. Awesome. It all works. So that's how we go about actually um, making the registration page for this particular, for our hangman game. Nice. No